Welcome to this video. Today I want to talk to you about CCleaner, which is a program that I've used in several of my cleaning videos, but I've never really talked about it on its own, what it is and why you should use it. Now when you first open up CCleaner, it will default to the Easy Clean tab, which is a new feature. Uh, basically you just click on Analyze and it will analyze your computer for any garbage it finds. You can review the specifics of what it's cleaning out and you can uncheck certain boxes if you would like to do so, so that's more to your liking and then you just click on clean all but I still personally prefer the custom clean option here on the left hand column where it gives us a more detailed checklist of exactly what is and is not being cleaned out of the computer and so generally speaking here underneath the Windows tab I don't recommend you check anything below the Windows log files because most of these are things you're going to want to keep also make sure that you're not deleting out saved passwords or information that you don't want out of your browsers because that can also cause some problems. You still have the analyze option here. You can just click on analyze and it gives you a, a breakdown exactly of what it's going to be cleaning out and where most of the garbage is coming out of. And then you also have a run cleaner option here in the bottom right corner. Now moving on, we have a registry clean option here on the left hand column. And this is an area of some concern for some people because there are a lot of bad registry cleaners out there. Some of them in and of themselves are malware. And so often it is advised to avoid registry cleaners, but CCleaner is actually a good program for this function. Now, a good example of when I recommend running the registry cleaner is if you have run an anti-malware or antivirus scan and it came back positive, you're probably going to want to run this cleaner, the registry cleaner, because you want to make sure all traces of that malware have been removed from the registry. Now, it is true that in some cases, running a registry cleaner can cause problems in Windows, but I do want to say that I've used CCleaner for many years and I've never once had it create a problem. However, if it is a concern for you, what I would recommend is that you set up a system restore point before you run the registry cleaner in CCleaner. And if you don't know how to do that, I will post a, a link down below in the notes in the video description to a short video that will walk you through how to set up a restore point in Windows. And then at this point, once you're ready to run it, you just click on scan for issues. It will give you a list if any are found. And then you'll just want to make sure all the boxes are checked. And then you can go ahead and click on fix less uh, selected issues. Now here you can back up the registry if you'd like to, but I personally would say just do the system restore point first. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on no. It looks like we had 65 issues. So we're going to go ahead and fix selected all. And you usually want to run it just one more time just to make sure that it did fix everything. And we could see on the second pass, no issues were found. Now moving on to tools, we're going to have a lot of uh, handy features here. First off, underneath the uninstall option, it will give us a list of everything that is installed on the computer. And so we can just quickly go through and remove all of the garbage that we need to off of the computer if necessary. When you find something you want to get rid of, you just select it and then click on uninstall on the right hand side. The software updater option is not something that I generally use, but if you want to check to make sure that your programs are up to date, you can come here as a second opinion option. Most programs though are really good about updating themselves. Updates are important because they involve security updates, so you do want to make sure that everything is up to date. The startup tab is something that I would recommend that you use. Here it will give you a list of everything that starts when you first turn the computer on, and so if you're running into problems with the computer taking a long time to boot up, or if it's just running slow, this is a great place to go to disable anything that may be running in the background. You'll notice that CCleaner in it of itself is on this list, and if you are just using the free version, which is what I am reviewing here today, I do recommend that you disable it because there's no point in it running in the background. If you're using the paid professional version, then you may want to consider leaving that turned on. You can also check the scheduled tasks, context menu, and Windows services, but for the average user, all you'll need to check is just the Windows tab. Next, we have the browser plugins where we can check to see what plugins are installed and running on our web browsers. Again, this is something you may want to look into, again, if you recently had malware on the computer because sometimes there can be traces left on your browser so you can just go through the list and make sure that everything checks out and you can disable it if needs be. Next is the disk analyzer where we can actually get a breakdown of what is taking up space on our C drive or any drive uh, basically on the computer altogether so we can see you know what folders we need to go through if we were trying to clean up space we can see pictures music and see how much space 
over here in the right hand column that each item is taking up on the computer. The next option we have is duplicate finder where we, we can use this option to find duplicate files. Again, this is another great uh, option to use, especially if you're dealing with low space on your drives. And so you just hit search and it will check to see if you do have any duplicate files. It will give you all of your drives listed down here if you have more than just a C drive. So just make sure that if you're trying to find duplicates on multiple drives that you check all those boxes as needed. Then we have the system restore option. It will list here all of the system restore points that you have already created. You'll notice that I went ahead and created two because According to this message, the latest one is disabled for system safety, so it's not going to allow you to remove all of them. It will allow you to remove all except for the latest or most recent one. And so a reason as to why you would do this, again, is if you're dealing with low disk space, depending on the cap that you've set for your system restore points, they can pile up and take up a lot of space. Again, that's going to depend on the settings that you've set. So this is another great area to go just to make sure that there's not unnecessary space being used with a long list of restore points. Drive wiper is also very, very handy. If you have a drive that you are going to recycle or give to someone else, what you're going to want to do is plug it into the computer and the drive will pop up here on this list. You will check that box and you can erase the entire drive. And then for security purposes, you're going to want to do more than just one pass. The average user is going to want to do three to seven passes. And basically what that is doing is making it more difficult for someone to retrieve data off of your, your used drive. You could do 35. It takes a really long time. And really the only people who should be doing that are people who are high profile targets like celebrities or executives. You know, basically a life and death situation where you don't want any information retrieved from that drive. Next, we're going to go to options and underneath the settings tab. The main things here is... Again, I would not check this run CCleaner when the computer starts option unless you're using the professional version. So if you're using the free, make sure that's unchecked. And then also you'll notice there's a secure delete option where we can select the secure delete and again have an option to do multiple passes to make that data more difficult to be retrieved. So basically it's talking about when you run this option, when you run this cleaner option, you're selecting how many passes it's going to do. And this is important because if you don't want your browser data recovered or if you want stuff from the recycle bin to not be recovered, you're going to want to do the secure file deletion. It is important to understand that when you delete something on your computer, whether through the recycle bin or whatnot, that data is still there. It's still recoverable. And so by doing multiple passes, it makes it more difficult for someone to retrieve that data. Now, most of these other features I don't really use. Um, some of these require the professional version. These are things you can look into. The only other thing I would check here is the privacy. I did uncheck this box just to help improve privacy. That's something that you yourself can determine if that's something you want to do. But the main thing that I look underneath options is the settings tab. Now here on Mac, we have much of the same features. We still have the cleaner option and we can see that we have a Mac OS X as well as an applications tab. And so again, the main thing you're going to focus on are the browsers as well as just make sure that if you're clearing out the system, I do recommend the following settings. You can go through and decide to clean out other things if you choose to do so, but these are usually the safest options as far as clearing out that data. And then if we go to tools, we still have the uninstall option where it gives us a list of everything that we can uninstall or remove from our Mac computer. Now, one thing I should mention about this is it does not include a list of the default apps. These are things that you've added and so if you want a full list, you will have to go to the Finder and Applications tab. So that is one distinction you do need to be aware of. But again, if there's something you want to remove, you just select it and then click on Uninstall. And then we do have a Startup tab, just again, like with Windows, it will give us a list of what is set to run in the background when we first start up the computer. And so if we want to disable something, we just select it and then click on Disable. Or we can even remove it um, entirely if we'd like to do so. We also still have the erase option. And in this case, I did plug in a flash drive. So we do have a secondary drive where we could then select to zero it out or do additional passes for a secure deletion of that drive. One thing I should mention, and I failed to mention this with the Windows computer, is if data recovery is something you're worried about, another alternative to doing a secure deletion is just encrypt the drive. Now with Mac, you can simply go down to System Preferences and select the Security and Privacy tab, which will take you to the File Vault. 
click on the padlock and then you'll have an option to turn file vault on and this is full disk encryption for your mac computer for windows i will post a link down below in the notes in the video description to a short tutorial on how to encrypt your windows computer for free if that's something you're interested in doing additionally we can go to options and again we'll see a lot of the same options as with windows under these settings we have the option to set it to secure deletion for the cleaner Again, that will make it more difficult to recover that data, especially from the recycle bin or from browsers. And then the rest of these you can go through. A lot of them do have to do with the professional or paid version, but those are the main features or functions with Seek Cleaner, both for Windows and for Mac. In short, it is a really good program that allows you to quickly and easily remove garbage out of your Windows computer. I do recommend giving it a shot for both Windows and for Mac. If you do have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.